Right, so within the past few months on this channel, it seems like constantly we are talking about new genres that I've never covered before. And it turns out, again, today is no different, because today we're going to be talking about the tabletop RPG community. So this is like your tabletop role-playing games, to the best of my knowledge, like Dungeons and & Dragons. And this genre has a very big community. There's a lot of content creators amongst it. But recently, there has been a lot of drama surrounding one person specifically and his lies. And that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So without further ado, let's actually add some context to this situation. But before we get any further, I do just want to tell you about today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Now, for me personally, I am someone who is really bad at managing my subscriptions. You know, you pay for a subscription, it doesn't seem like that much, but then you get more and more subscriptions and it really does start to add up. And most of the time, I won't even use the subscription anymore after a few months and cancelling them can be a bit of a nightmare. And if you're like me, let me tell you that it doesn't have to be a nightmare because Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower your bills and helps you manage your money better. They can safely identify your recurrent payments and cancel any of your unwanted subscriptions all within the app within a few clicks. You can even set your own budgets and Rocket Money will analyze your spending habits and create you a custom budget that works with your lifestyle. And it's a proven service because Rocket Money has helped its customers save up to $740 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. And not to mention, you would be joining the already 5 million members who are using Rocket Money today. So if you're interested, you can go to rocketmoney.com slash to get started for free and you can also get extra features if you go premium. So yeah, that's rocketmoney.com slash marker. You can see it on screen or you can click the link in the description to get started for free. And I just want to give a big thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. And without further ado, let's get back into it. Okay, so one big creator in this community is Gabe Hicks, also known as Gabe James Games. I can't show you a lot of his content because a lot of it is now deleted, but here's a video I found on YouTube called Tabletop Table Talk with Gabe James Games. Tone, context, dynamic, where he's just giving like advice, I guess. There are a bunch of you that can say yes, and I'm glad. I can think of at least six people that I know that have it. Okay, so I mean, I don't really know what he's going on about, but just to give some context as to who this person is, this is the type of stuff he did. I also found some of his old TikToks where he would dress up as like certain characters and make like TikToks and follow trends and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, that stuff is kind of irrelevant. This is just the main person we're talking about today. And it seemed like Gabe was a very respected person in the community until his lies started to unravel. And this all seemed to start, or at least became publicly known, when a creator called Cam Inator, Cam Like Camera, a TikTok of 110,000 followers, uploaded this video that's now got two point. 1 million views talking about Gabe. So she starts off by saying that her and Gabe were in a monogamous relationship that was previously polyamorous. I wanted to take a moment to address the shitstorm that has been going on the last couple days surrounding Gabe Hicks. Up until Sunday, Gabe Hicks was my partner. We were in a monogamous relationship. At his suggestion, we were previously polyamorous and primary partners. And this is where she starts to go through some of the lies that Gabe said, starting with the fact that when they actually first got together, Gabe said he was single, but he wasn't. Gabe told me he was single when he started sleeping with me. I now know that wasn't the case. He was in a monogamous relationship with another woman up until November. Gabe also told Cam that he was in love with her, but at the same time, he was sleeping with two other people in the community. In October and November, he came to Chicago uh, visited me in my home and told me that he was in love with me. At the same time, he was also seeing two other creators in the TTRPG space, Jillian and Maisie. And Jillian and Maisie are quite key names in this whole story. Obviously, these are two of her creators. We are going to be looking at Jillian's response video after this one that really puts into context, like, how deep these lies were. Now, Gabe would have flirty interactions with these people online publicly, and when Cam would ask him about it, he would basically kind of, like, put the blame on her, but then also say that these people that he was having these flirty interactions with which is like obsessive fans. He had flirty interactions with these people publicly um, online in his TikTok comments. You can see them for yourself and um, throughout his Twitter. And when I would see them and bring them up and ask, hey, just making sure, um, are you interested in this person? Totally okay. If you are, I just want to know. He would lie and told me that my insecurities and trauma from my last relationship and my bipolar was making me anxious. He also told me repeatedly that his interactions with these people were that of fan and creator, and that they were just obsessive fans who wanted to work with him and be just like him, 
and they made him uncomfortable. Now, what's even more bizarre about the situation is Cam makes it very clear in these videos that if he just told her that this was going on, she would be okay with it, right? She is open to having a polyamorous relationship. The difference would be that they'd have to make changes for their sexual health because obviously he would be sleeping with other people, but he didn't tell her this. Now, not only would he lie to Cam about other people, he would lie to other people about Cam. At the same time he was doing this, he was lying to both of those people and to other people about the nature of our relationship. He said that I was a crazy person who had a crush on him and wanted a relationship, but he couldn't stand to be alone with me. Now you might be wondering, how did he get away with this without his lies being revealed if they're all in the same community? And this is because he almost had like a strategic plan to get these people to not speak to each other. This could just be talking bad about one person to another person, so they don't like each other and they don't want to spend time with each other. But because he was also a very big figure in this community, he would get people like blacklisted from certain stuff, so they couldn't be in the same room together. And because he was trying to be really secretive about this, he wouldn't be seen with Cam in public too often. And when Cam would ask him about this, this was his reason. He blamed his lack of public acknowledgement of me on the fact that he didn't want people to look at our relationship and judge it because it is an interracial one, or it was an interracial one. Cam then goes on to say that Gabe was sleeping with multiple people at these conventions that they were going to, which is something that he told Cam she was the only person he'd ever done that with. And recently at PAX East, which I believe is like another convention, there was people in the community that wouldn't work with Matt and Jillian because of the things that Gabe had told them. Now Matt and Jillian are in a relationship, a polyamorous relationship, and Jillian was obviously seeing Gabe at the same time, but Matt knew about this, right? And Jillian also believed that Gabe was in a polyamorous relationship because this is what he had told and because Gabe would talk bad about these people behind their backs, Cam goes on to say that these people probably lost jobs and they do this for a living, right? This is their job. And they probably lost certain jobs because of this. It scares me that she and Matt and Maisie who make their living doing this, this is their source of income, have had their reputation slandered and have possibly lost out on jobs because Gabe was trying to cover up his tracks of cheating. I'm very lucky that my day job is not in the TTRPG community my income, my my livelihood is not tied to this. And like I said before, Cam says that if he had just told about this, she would have been okay with it. What's difficult for me is that I am, as I said, polyamorous. And if he had told me from the beginning that he was interested in Jillian and that they were starting a sexual relationship or any kind of relationship, or if he was interested in Maisie or any of the other many people, um, I would have been okay with it. And then Cam ends his video by saying that this is something that's been going on for six years with him. There is so much more. There is at minimum six years of this exact behavior from him. I'm trying to figure out how to organize all of this and who's comfortable with what being released. But he ruined multiple lives. And like I said before, there are multiple people involved with this. And Jillian, who I mentioned before, also made a video talking about this. Now she starts off the video confirming that Gabe was cheating on Cam. He cheated on his now former partner with me and countless other people and lied to me our entire relationship. Jillian also goes on to say that Gabe not only spoke bad about her, but also her partner. I have a primary partner um, who has been dragged into all of this as well because Gabe also slandered his name, um, called him terrible things. And again, Jillian confirms the fact that Gabe was telling Jillian that he was in a polyamorous relationship. And he lied to me that he was polyamorous and that his former partner knew about me and anyone else he was seeing. Which according to Cam, and does actually seem like the truth because Gabe has came out and now apologized, which we'll get into. But it seems like this was yet again, another complete lie from Gabe and they weren't in a polyamorous relationship. And in fact, it was Gabe's choice to be in a monogamous relationship. And Julian then goes on to talk about Pax East and says that people were being like really weird and really mean to her and she just didn't know why. Turns out it's because of the stuff that Gabe was saying about her. Beginning at Pax, I was treated really f fucking horribly. Um, he was really weird and kept dodging me and was really cold to me. And his partner was equally cold. Granted, with the information they had at the time, made a lot of sense. Um, his friends were weird. Their, his former partner's friends were weird. It makes sense. Like All of it makes sense now. At the time, I had no idea why people seemed to be so turned off from my presence. And so I just ended up leaving a lot of the time. And it wasn't only Gibbs' partner and people that he had a sexual relationship that he was doing this to. He would do this to everyone around him, it seemed. In fact, people that he was working with. Like, for example, we have a video here from an account called Cast Party Dungeons and Dragons, which I believe is like a podcast. And Gabe was supposed to be part of this podcast. They'd even advertised it, released like a trailer saying Gabe was going to be part of the podcast. 
They were very excited about it. But obviously they've rescinded it now. On Friday, March 22nd, at Cast Party's first ever live show, we announced to the world that Gabe Hicks would be joining Cast Party as a permanent member of our cast for Campaign 2. Right off the bat, with everything that has come to light, we want to rescind that announcement. We have completely pulled our Campaign 2 trailer from all podcasting platforms. We will no longer be working with Gabe Hicks on our upcoming Campaign 2. Every episode that we had backlogged with him to prepare for the launch of Campaign 2 will be refilmed. We'll be starting fresh with Campaign 2 recordings and postponing the launch. And on top of that, he goes on to mention that Gabe was talking bad about him and the entire crew of this production. We found out that after the weekend at PAX East that Gabe had been badmouthing our entire crew. Every single one of us as individuals and our show as a whole. He was saying terrible things about us behind our backs, both as a team and as a production while actively working on an entire 90 plus episode campaign with us. Gabe seemed ecstatic about being a part of campaign too, and we were excited to have him. And he was the one who agreed to be a part of this Again, 90 episode long campaign. Like I just don't understand this thought process behind this at all, right? Like even with the stuff we just spoke about, which is beyond horrible, that, that goes without saying. But you can see what his thought process was to an extent because he was cheating, right? So he's telling lies to try and cover his tracks. Again, very, very, very wrong, very horrible stuff but you can see why he was doing it, even though it is completely wrong. But with this, what does he have to gain out of it? Like, what was his thought process? To badmouth a, a team that he's working with on a 90 episode series? I don't get it. It seems like he just really enjoyed badmouthing people and turning people on each other nonstop for some unknown reason. But this is where we now get into Gabe's response, which is a re-upload because he, like I said, he's deleted all of his accounts where, <laughs> It's a bizarre video, to be honest. He kind of says a lot, but also nothing at the same time. I mean, straight away, he kind of just blames this on the fact that he's a bad communicator. From the very top, I have been disrespectful to these people, and that is my failure. That is my failure to communicate. That is my failure to acknowledge and show proper respect. Yeah, I think it's definitely a bit more than that. And he mentions the fact that this is kind of like a miscommunication throughout this multiple times. A weird excuse. He does then go on to apologize to people who were involved. I owe a dramatic apology to both Jillian and Matt for any effect that anything I said had been had been an affecting way on their presence in the tabletop space. But then straight after this, he goes on to blame the communication again. And like I said, I didn't communicate and approach it respectfully and directly in a way that was comfortable and safe for everyone involved. Yeah, again, I think it's a bit more than that. I mean, how can you use communication as an excuse to just badmouth people and try and ruin their careers and remove certain opportunities from people who do this for a living? Like, how is that a communication thing? I mean, that's just malicious at the end of the day. That's all it is. Again, he proceeds to talk about his miscommunication, apparently, once the relationship turned to monogamous. I've been seeing someone in a polyamorous relationship and then when that relationship had switched to monogamous, I did not clearly, properly, or directly communicate. And that is my failing. That is my failing in making sure that everyone was actually able to opt in properly. I mean, again, it's a lot more than that. You literally went from a polyamorous relationship to a monogamous relationship, which surely means that you're not gonna be sleeping with other people anymore, and then you proceeded to do so. So I think it's a bit more than a miscommunication. He then goes on to say that he's gonna get a therapist and says that he doesn't want people to defend him. Don't praise me, don't defend, don't give credit um this is just as it should be the most important thing is that when people are hurt and you've done wrong that you solely focus on doing right and acknowledging when you have been wrong and yeah that's kind of his whole response to this whole situation i mean if we look at the comments of this video again this is a re-upload but the comments aren't really buying it. I mean, here we just have a comment that simply says, those were words, I guess. <laughs> it's giving, I'm sorry you feel that way. This apologies ran about way of saying absolutely nothing. So many words to say absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's kind of what I took from this, to be fair. And like I said before, this is a situation that's blew up on TikTok recently. I can't see a way that Gabe manages to get back in the community because it seems like nobody wants anything to do with him, and rightly so. And apparently, from what we've heard, this is something that's been going on for years, over six years, apparently. So I don't really see how he comes back from this, to be honest. It, it kind of reminds me of like the Ned Fulmer the Try Guys situation with obviously certain differences here and there, but it kind of has the same vibe to that. And I mean, we've seen what happened to Ned Fulmer, right? In fact, that's the point. We haven't really seen anything from Ned Fulmer ever since that situation happened. And I don't really see how he could ever work his way back into YouTube in general. But yeah, a completely messed up situation. I feel really bad for all the people who were involved with this. It must be a really shit time to be going through. Hopefully they can take some positives from this and come together, right? These people who, for some reason, disliked each other all because of what they'd been told by Gabe. Hopefully can now put that aside and realize that they could actually be really good friends 
And it seems that way. In Jillian's video, she does say, like, me and Cam would have got along if it wasn't for all of this. So I'm sure they will become friends, which is great to see. I mean, that is a positive out of a very negative situation. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave the video there. And I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below on everything that we spoke about in today's video. If you are new here, please subscribe, all that stuff. And until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, goodbye.